Use equity markets are ready for another volatile session. Your stocks are tumbled following the rally on a Wednesday. Mounting recession fears and turmoil in the UK stock market triggered massive selling on Thursday. After an early rise of the benchmark, US stock indexes took a nasty dive, and the Dow Jones plummeted by more than 600 points. The Nasdaq slumped almost 4% intraday. To sum up, the Dow Jones closed 1.54% down, the Nasdaq sank 2.84% and the S&P 500 skidded 2.11% to close at 3,640 points, the lowest level in one year. The New York pre-market was volatile today. All key indexes were gyrating in a sink following the overall downward trajectory. The S&P 500 is expected to trade in the intraday Canada between 3,570 and 3,740 points. A pale in inflation and a robust selling in the global stock markets dampen risk appetite among investors. The culprit for the pessimism on a Thursday was the new tax plan on the UK government. New British Premier Liz Truss advocated for tax cuts as suggested by her cabinet. Such prospects pushed the pound selling to the weakest level in 37 years. Yields of US treasuries again jumped yesterday as investors were mulling over the Fed's hawkish rhetoric in the face of a looming recession. The US GDP data released on Thursday confirmed the technical recession. On the other hand, the weekly update by the Labor Department showed an unexpected decline in the first-time unemployment claims, thus giving more leverage to the Federal Reserve. The stock market failed to recover due to a fall in the Apple shares. The Bank of America downgraded the rating of the iPhone manufacturer because of waning consumer confidence. Earlier weak demand for the iPhone 14 cancelled the company's uh, plans for expanding production. The Dow Jones is closing September with the worst results since the pandemic, and the S&P 500 tumbled almost 8%, having, having tested the lowest level since November 2020. And the Nasdaq lost more than 9% for the months, having tested the levels um, uh, lower in the two years. Almost all key groups of assets incurred losses in the third quarter. The S&P 500 closed in the red for the third quarter straight for the first time since the bank crash in 2008. Moreover, the index has been falling uh, the longest losing streak since 1984. And the major stock indexes were trading in the red in the early New York session. But everything changed following the release of the Fed uh, favorite inflation indicator, PCE price index. The PCE deflator rose 0.3% in months in August, after a 0.1% downtick in July. Prices of consumer goods fell to 0.3%, whereas prices of services climbed 0.6%. Food prices grew 0.8%, but energy prices declined 5.5%. The core PC, excluding food and energy prices, increased 0.6%, and the annual rate is to 6.2% from 6.4%. Today, the market will get to know a consumer sentiment index by the University of Michigan. Several Fed's policymakers are here to speak tonight. Shares of high-tech giants such as Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, Amazon and Meta traded mixed in the pre-market. Nike stock traded under pressure today. The shares dropped 10% in the pre-market after the company's announcement. The world's largest sports clothing manufacturer warned about a contraction in a gross profit this year due to bargain prices and the firm used dollar. 
The currency market is also overwhelmed by extreme volatility. The US dollar index topped 112 points after sliding to a one-week low because the PCI deflator and the core PCE came in a higher than expected. The US dollar index is now trading at 112.30 within an intraday carrier between 111.90 and 113.20. Despite sharp swings, the US dollar has been closing with the gains for four months in a row. Its index has surged almost 10% this quarter on the back of expectations that the US Fed will go ahead with a uh, its uh, fight against inflation despite recession risks. The U.S. Central Bank has already increased interest rates by 75 basis points three times. The regulator intends to notch the federal funds rate up to 4.6% next year. Interest rates will be uh, put on a halt until 2024, and such a straightforward statements dispelled hopes for the dovish turn in the near time. The greenback is advancing across the boat, and traders prefer to buy the dollar, especially against the sterling and the euro amid economic and emergency worries. Personal spending in the United States grew 0.4% on months, higher than the expected 0.2% increase. Consumer activity was robust in the first half of the year. Nowadays, it's a cooling down because the Fed forged a hat with its aggressive monetary tightening. Besides, energy prices remain at the levels not far away from 40-year highs, thus denting consumer activity. The USD card pays the trading higher again, reflecting the overall market sentiment. The loony has shed 0.3% against its American rival and seems poised to print lower lows. The currency pay is expected to trade in the corridor between 1.3680 and 1.3810. Oil prices are trading mixed, incapable of supporting the Canadian dollar. Brand crude futures are trading at about $89 a barrel, having slipped more than 20% this quarter. The benchmark rate is wind down by rising fears about low energy demand due to a global recession. The bearish outlook is also caused by a sudden increase in the demand for the US dollar. The commodity is denominated in dollars. Besides concern, our disrupted supplies from Russia is also bearish for the uh, uh, oil market. On the plus side, the world's uh, top energy importer, China, again has a strong oil demand. OPEC and its allies are likely to limit oil output rates. These factors prevent oil prices from a steep decline. WTI has been printed losses for four months straight. Um, WTI futures are closing the quarter in the red uh, for the first time since 2020. And uh, the crypto market is keeping fragile optimism in a parallel with the high tech stocks. Hence, crypto assets are waving uh, between gains and losses. Bitcoin has been trading on a CISO. The token is a trading at about $19,400 at the moment of recording this video. Popular altcoins are trading mixed today with the quiet uh, dynamics, and the intraday carrier for the Bitcoin is a scene between $18,200 and $20,200. InstaForex wishes you successful trades and prudent decisions. Have a nice weekend and see you on Monday.